Welcome back. In the previous videos, what we had been doing was using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation in order to determine properties of a buffer, like figuring out what the pH of a buffer is. Or in some cases, we used the mass balance equation to figure out the uh, concentration of the individual species within the buffer. Okay, But what we're going to do in this video is we're going to do something a little bit different. Okay, And what I have for you is basically the same circumstances that we had in the previous videos. Okay, We're going to be using um, A- minus as our lactate and HA as our lactic acid. And we had 0.1 moles of lactic acid and 0.5 moles of lactate. And what I want to do in this video is I want to figure out what the pH is and the change in pH is if we were to add 5 milliliters of 0.5 molar HCl to the solution, okay? And just keep in mind that our initial buffer is, its total volume is going to be 1 liter. So if I was to express the HA concentration in terms of molarity, it would be 0.1 molar, right? Because you take moles divided by the volume, which is 1 liter, so you get 0.1 molar. Likewise, the concentration of A- minus in molarity would be 0.5 molar or 0.5 moles per liter, okay? So what I'm going to do is I have this beaker that has 0.5 molar HCl. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a sample of that, which is just five milliliters, and I wanna see how uh, the pH is going to change in my buffer if I add just five milliliters of 0.5 molar HCl, okay? Now, since all of my other um, measurements of the HA and the A minus, <coughs> excuse me, since those measurements are in moles, what I want to do is I want to get the um, hydrochloric acid in those units as well. Now, what I know is I know that I have 0 0.5, 0 0.5 moles, moles of HCl per liter, right? I have 0 0.5 moles of HCl per liter. And what I want to do is I want to somehow get that in units of moles, okay? So I know my concentration, and I'm taking a certain volume of that right? So let's do this. Let's say that, um, let's first get the units of liters in terms of milliliters. So I know that one liter is equal to a thousand milliliters, right? Okay. So now I know that it's going to be 0.5 divided by a thousand moles per milliliter, right? But I have five milliliters of that. So I'm going to multiply this times five milliliters, right? So milliliters cancel. And when I figure out this uh, amount, it's going to be in units of moles, and I've calculated this, and it turns out that the moles, which you, we usually abbreviate N, will say moles of HCl, the number of moles of HCl is 0 0.0025 moles, okay? And so let's think about conceptually what's going to happen when I put HCl in water. Well, just realize that when I put HCl in water, HCl is a strong acid, so it's going to dissociate completely. And this right here is sort of the reaction for HCl when you put it in water. Okay? Normally what they'll do is they'll just say HCl dissociates to a proton completely plus the chloride ion, right? But realize that the, hydr the, the, the H plus ion really exists in the hydrated form as H3O plus, okay? The chloride ion is not going to play any role here. Um, it's just a spectator ion. But just notice that theoretically, for every one molecule of HCl that we put in, we should get one molecule of hydronium because they have a one-to-one -one stoichiometry, okay? So I can effectively say that um, and let's do it using dimensional analysis. If I have 0 0.0025 moles of HCl, will we know that there's a one-to-one -one stoichiometry between the hydrochloric acid and the hydronium? Because I know that for every one mole of HCl, I should have one mole of H3O plus. And so what this says is that the number of moles of hydronium is equal to the number of moles of HCl in solution. And of course, that's just theoretical. In reality, the Gibbs free energy of this reaction causes it to lie far, 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 far in the direction of H3O plus. Okay, so you can effectively think of this reaction as going all the way to completion. It's a strong electrolyte and so forth. Okay, so basically, theoretically, for every mole of HCl, you should have one mole of hydronium. Okay, and we're going to use that to our advantage in this uh, problem. Now, what I have here shown is, um, at least in the direction that we're going to run it, is we put in some lactate, right? We have some concentration of lactate in solution, right? And then we have hydronium to go with it. Now, 
Hydronium you could essentially think of as a strong acid. So if I put a base, which in, in this context is lactate, in, in solution with lact or excuse me, in solution with hydronium, we're going to have a proton transfer. Okay, so what's going to happen is lactate is going to deprotonate hydronium. Okay, that's the mechanism that you would see. And so what we're going to get is lactic acid and water. So basically for every hydronium that we put into solution, okay, we're going to get one lactic acid. Okay, and that's because the lactate will deprotonate the hydronium and you'll end up with lactic acid in water. Okay, so that's something to bear in mind. And the way we're actually going to figure out how the pH changes is using something called an ice table. So in the direction that we'd be running if we put hydrochloric acid in solution, okay, we're going to start with lactate. And again, we abbreviate that A minus, right? We're going to put in some hydrochloric acid, but realize that that just basically equates to the hydronium, right? And then that's going to yield, that's going to yield our lactic acid. And we don't really care about the water in this equation, okay? And then we're going to set up our ice table like this. Okay, so here's our ice table. And again, just like in all ice tables, we have an initial, we have a change, and we have an equilibrium concentration, okay? Well, what were our initial concentrations? Well, our initial concentration um, of A minus, that was just 0 0.5 molar, right? 0 0.5 molar. Okay, and what's our concentration of HA? Well, our concentration of HA was just 0 0.1 moles. And what's my concentration of hydronium that I start with? Well, I had my buffer that was really just a mixture of A minus and HA, right? But then I stick some hydronium in there, and at T equals 0, before any of the reactions happen, I'm going to theoretically start off with 0 0.0025 moles of hydronium, right? I'm going to start off with that much. Okay, now what's going to happen is, remember that the lactate is going to deprotonate hydronium. And if the lactate deprotonates hydronium, theoretically, uh, the lactate is going to get converted to lactic acid. So essentially what's going to happen is if you, if you well, if, if, if the lactate reacts with the hydronium, then that's going to take the hydronium out of solution and make it water, right? So you're losing that amount of hydronium. And if the lactate is being consumed with the hydronium to form lactic acid, you're also going to lose that quantity of lactate. So we'll have minus 0 0.0025. And when we calculate the equilibrium concentrations here, um, in the case of the hydronium, that just cancels out to zero, okay? In the case of the lactate, I end up calculating this is 0 0.4975 moles. And then also just bear in mind that if we're losing that amount of lactate, we're going to gain it on the other side. So 0 0.0025. And so that means our equilibrium concentration of lactic acid is going to be 0 0.1 0 0.025 moles, okay? So now what we can do is we can actually rewrite our Henderson-Hasselbalch equation at solving it using these equilibrium values. So again, we know that the pH is equal to the pKa plus the log base 10, where the argument is the concentration of the base divided by the concentration of the acid. That's our argument, okay? But this time we have new concentrations because we added hydrochloric acid, okay? And we're trying to calculate the pH. So what's our pKa? Well, we know from the last video that our pKa is 3.86, right? And we're gonna add onto that the log base 10 of the argument, which is A minus. In this case, it's 0.4975 divided by the concentration of HA, which is 0 0.1025. So I'm calculating our new pH to be, to three significant figures, 4.55. So that's our new pH. And I challenge you to go back and look at the previous video. And what you'll find is that the pH actually dropped. And why did it drop? Well, we're, if we're increasing the hydronium concentration in solution, okay, we're lowering the pH, right? We're lowering the pH. And that's because we added hydrochloric acid to the solution. Well, what was our pH from the last video? Well, the last video, we'll call that pH 1. pH 1 was 4.56. And let's just have the intuition behind this. We're adding HCl to the solution. It wasn't a whole lot of of you know HCl, but it's enough to drop the pH. Well, this right here, this is our pH final, right? That's our pH final. And what did we see? Well, we added HCl and the pH dropped, right? 
And if we had added sodium hydroxide, what would have happened? Well, that's a strong base. So in that case, our pH would have rose some. But in this case, it's HCl, so the pH should have dropped. And ordinarily, what the questions will say is find the change in pH. Well, the change in pH is just equal to pH final minus pH initial. So in this case, the pH final was what? It was 4.55, right? We subtract off the pH initial, which is 4.56. And so we get the change in pH is negative. 0.01 okay and pH is unitless so you just leave it like this so negative 0.01 and again I think this makes sense because if you're dropping the pH that's going to give you a negative value so this is one case in which the sign actually matters and let's just have the intuition what would it mean if the delta pH was positive well that would imply that your final pH is actually higher and how would you get a higher final pH well that would mean that you would have had to add a strong base like sodium hydroxide or something like that okay but if the pH goes down, that means you added some kind of acid. In this case, it's a strong acid like HCl. So let's do a very quick recap of what we just saw, because this is a very important point. Okay, We added HCl to solution, and that increased the hydronium concentration. And essentially what's going to happen is the lactate, or A-, minus, is going to deprotonate hydronium. And theoretically, for every hydronium that we put into solution, that's going to result in the formation of lump one lactic acid from lactate. And the actually hydrochloric acid is coming from 0.5 molar HCl, and we're basically taking a 5 milliliter sample of that. And we found out that that equated essentially to 0 0.0025 moles. Okay, And for every mole of HCl we have, we have one mole of hydronium. Okay, And we use this ice table to figure out the equilibrium concentrations of both A- minus and HA. And if we're adding HCl to the solution, that should basically mean that we're going to get more conjugate acid and less conjugate base. And the, the reasoning behind that is that the hydronium is reacting with the conjugate base, and that's going to take the conjugate conjugate base out to form the conjugate acid okay and this is generally the way you set up your ice table like this and so we saw that the conjugate acid concentration rose and the conjugate base concentration fell okay and so that means that our overall pH is going to drop now what I want to do in, at this point is I want to figure out how you would find the molarities of both the um, of the equilibrium concentrations of both HA and A minus. And what I'll do is I'll actually just do it for HA because I think you can figure out how to do it for A minus. We'll do the same thing. Okay. So remember that molarity, molarity is defined as moles of the solute per liter of solution. Well, what's the number of moles of my solute? Well, in this case, it's 0 0.1025 and that's moles of my HA, right? And what's the volume? Well, at first, remember we said that the initial volume was one liter, and you might be tempted to just put one liter, but it's not one liter, right? Because we added HCl, and it was five milliliters of it, okay? So if you add five milliliters onto one liter, that means your new volume is gonna be zero point, or excuse me, 1.005 liters. And how do I get my final volume? Well, my final volume is going to be equal to the initial volume, which is um, one liter, plus the five milliliters that I added on from the HCl. So again, it, it, it's not going to change the value of the molarity by much, but it is going to contribute some. And in the case of significant significant figures, it might change it enough to make your answer incorrect. Okay, so make sure you add on that extra. Um, small bit of volume onto your total volume when you take the final molarities okay so this would be how you would calculate um, the molarity of your new equilibrium concentrations for your ha and a minus see you in the next video